Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Thank you to Ian McCarg and John Nowak, bagpipe and drum, for leading the processional. Let's give them a round of applause. My name is Nolan Atkins, provost at Northern Vermont University. It is my great pleasure to declare Linden's 110th commencement ceremony to be in session. I now invite Autumn Chamberlain, class of 2022, to the podium to sing the national anthem. As Autumn makes her way to the platform, I would like to ask all veterans in the audience to rise as they are able. These veterans who are students, family members, faculty, staff, and who have often set aside their own hopes and dreams to protect and defend our country, we offer our heartfelt gratitude for your steadfast service, both in peacetime and during war, here at home and abroad. I would ask everyone to stand with these honored veterans during the singing of our national anthem. Please remove your caps at this time. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming Thank you, Autumn, and please remain on the platform. Please be seated, everyone. I now invite the following students to come forward to sing America the Beautiful, as well as Lyndon's alma mater. And they are all members of the class of 2022. They are Curtis Bates, Autumn Chamberlain, <laughs> Carolyn Frazier, and Vanessa Simonek.
which brings us rally to sing her praises high. Linden, alma mater, hail to thee forever from every loyal son and daughter. shining beyond the mountain's highest rim. Our song of friendship ever binding shall rise thy fame to brings us sorrow, for though the future brings us grace, thy memory far beyond tomorrow, time never shall efface. Linden, alma mater, hail to Thank you to our students for sharing your musical talents with us on this special day. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the members of the platform party. Starting on my far left are Lori Werdenschlag, professor of psychology and our faculty marshal. William Morrison, associate professor and chair, business administration and the reader of our graduate names. Ethan Coppenrath, alumni association president, class of 2002. Robert Seba, class of 2022 student speaker. Senator Keisha Ram Hinsdale, our guest speaker. And starting on my far right, Dan Daly, professor and chair of mathematics and computer science and chair of the faculty assembly. Thomas Anderson, associate academic dean. Les Cannett, inter interim academic dean. Representative James Maslin, Vermont State College's system trustee, and John W. Mills, interim president of Northern Vermont University. I now invite President John Mills to the podium to offer his remarks to the class of 2022. Congratulations to the class of 2022. You've been through a lot and uh, to get here, and it's very, very big day for you, but also for all of the people in the audience supporting you today. I have one statement to read, and then I'll get into my remarks. I just want to acknowledge that NVU acknowledges that the land on which we gather, the place now known as Vermont, is the traditional and unceded territories of the Abenaki Nation. We testify that we learn and, and gain from a range of landscapes that belong to this indigenous population. And now I'll find my remarks. I'm very pleased to be able to celebrate this NVU commencement with you. The first for NVU as a complete founding class. Give or take a year or two that I may have missed in counting, this is my 46th commencement. And I can tell you this, 
it is just as exciting as the very first one, my own baccalaureate graduation. It is exciting because it celebrates several important milestones or accomplishments. One is the name commencement, signifies that you are commencing on a new exciting part of your life with a credential signifying your professional expertise in the marketplace. Another is that it shows that by hard work and commitment, you can attain academic success in the demanding world of higher education. And for us that are witnessing this accomplishment today, it is a testimony to our faith in you when you entered NVU and that we can take pride in the fact that our efforts have contributed to the development of the next class of informed and trained citizens who will add to our society's successes. And that is the true goal of higher education. So feel very, very good about this day. Take the time to congratulate yourself. You've earned it. And then make sure you take the time to thank all those who helped you along the way. I know from lots of experience, no one gets to the place you are today on their own. And that is why I also want to say thank you to everyone under this tent or in the theater or streaming in. NVU is a family and we all can take some credit for the accomplishments we honor today. So again, congratulations for a great achievement. I now invite Jim Maslin, a member of the Vermont State College Board of Trustees, to offer his remarks. Thank you. Good morning. It's an honor and a privilege to represent the trustees here today, and particularly to, rec um, to welcome the people who soon to graduate with a baccalaureate from Linden, NVU Linden, and those who are earning advanced degrees also. Um, it has been quite a journey for you, as we know. Um, all students who work their way through college um, undergo somewhat of a transformation from incoming freshmen to college graduates. And as some of you know, many of you probably know, um, Lyndon, Johnson, Castleton, and VTC have been undergo undergoing a transformation at the same time from separate campuses, then to NVU here and, here and at Johnson. And finally, as we're working our way towards Vermont State University. Um, hopefully, your courses of study have been relatively uninterrupted as the trustees have been working through this with the faculty and administration. Um, whatever it is, you've gotten here. There's one experience that you have ex that, that has you under undertaken that is quite unusual, which is you've endure, endured two years of COVID when you were kicked off of campus for a while. So your college experience was not what I experienced, what, 55 or so years ago, a while ago. Um, and at that time, life may have been a little simpler, maybe not. It was certainly less expensive. When I entered college, you could go to Dartmouth or Middlebury for about $3,000 a year total, or UNH or UVM for about $2,500 a year, which was still a struggle, but it was less expensive, as I've said, and you and your parents all know the arduous task that you have taken to get to this point, so congratulations each and every one of you. Um, I can tell you when I graduated from college, I can't remember a word that was spoken by anyone, although I do remember that I was there, <laughs> um, evidently. Um, I earned a degree and then on. Um, but I can remember and would like to share with you two things that came from my freshman year in college. The first was at freshman convocation, a bunch of hundreds of starry-eyed incoming college freshmen 
who were about to gain an education, we hoped, and perhaps to go save the world or earn our first million dollars or whatever that may have been. And those are remarks by the uh, retiring president, Wally Sterling, who based his remarks to us on four simple words. Four words, take the long view. Um, it certainly was applicable then, and I think to all of you and those of us who served in the legislature or any job where you've worked your way on, you know it takes time to get from point A to point Z, B, and sometimes the route is very circuitous. But again, take the long view. It takes a while. You have to find your way. You have to build a coalition of allies. Find out who your friends are, who are the administration or bosses that you can work with as you go forward. The other thing from freshman year in college was that in freshman English, which was a while ago, we were asked to read Camus' Myth of Sisyphus. Camus, better known for his work, The Stranger, that many people read in high school. That was a while ago. Um, but the myth of Sisyphus is really quite a remarkable piece. Sisyphus, you may remember, is a poor bugger who's condemned to roll a rock up a hill or a mountain, only to find when he gets to the top that it won't balance there. It rolls down, and he has to start the whole thing all over again. That's, the, um, I think, the contemporary view of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And you might ask your parents if they experienced certain things, trying to teach you one thing or another. Did you all get it the first time? Well, maybe not. I Certainly, I didn't. Um, and it's true on many other works of, uh, walks of life. But Sisyphus says, wait a minute. Excuse me, Camus says, wait a minute. Sisyphus is actually a hero. He's trying the insurmountable. He's trying things that other people haven't been able to do. do. Um, and he hopes to su succeed, no matter what the odds. And in doing so, Camus says, Sisyphus announces, pronounces, proclaims his humanity. That's who we are as people, trying to do things that are nominally impossible to do, but we think we'll succeed if we only just try a little harder. And so it goes. It's a tough place out there in the world. As we all know, you've experienced COVID, and to, excuse me, people, in the audience from Western New York State, my deepest sympathies. It's a hard place out there, but ladies and gentlemen of the graduating class, we need your help. Realistically, we don't know how to do everything. We need your help. So I would say, as you proceed from these hollowed house, this tent, out into the sunshine, keep pushing your rock up the hill. Take the long view, enjoy life, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, and thank you for joining us today. As you know, achieving a college degree requires hard work on the part of the students, but it also requires support and encouragement from family and friends. For this reason, I now ask that the entire class of 2022 please rise. And now it's your turn. Graduates, I invite you to recognize your parents, spouses, partners, children, family, family members, peers, and friends who helped you along the way, particularly during this challenging time. Please give them all a big round of applause. I would now ask that you turn to the faculty and recognize them for their wisdom, support, and guidance as they have provided you during your educational journey here at NVU Linden. Please give them a round of applause.
Thank you, and please be seated. Today we are pleased to have Bobby Saba speak on behalf of the class of 2022. Bobby is graduating with a bachelor's degree in atmospheric science, as well as an associate's degree in electronic journalism arts. Bobby has been an active ambassador in the admissions office during his time at Linden, and more recently has served as a resident assistant. He has also served on the NVU Linden American Meteorological Society Student Chapter Executive Board for three years and two as the chapter president. In addition, he has had the opportunity to forecast for the Vermont Agency of Transportation. Bobby is also a member of the Noah Hollings class of 2020, and I know that that doesn't mean a lot to most of you, but let me just say that that's a big deal. It is my pleasure to invite Bobby to the podium to address his peers. I apologize for the dogs. Those are not actual dogs. Those are just my brothers. I don't know why they bark. They just do. Uh, and before I really get into it, uh, from myself and the rest of the atmospheric sciences class, we do apologize for the weather. Um, we don't really have control over it quite yet, but once we get our diplomas, it's game over. Um, if you have any suggestions, um, there's a recycling bin behind the tent and we'll be happy to take them. <laughs> now that all the terrible jokes are out of the way, we'll move forward with the even worse ones. But good morning, everybody. My name is Bobby Saba. I am a graduating student in the atmospheric sciences, and I am the NVU Linden student commencement speaker today. Like any sensible person, I've been panicking since I found out that I would be the speaker today. As you would expect, my Google search history for the last few weeks has consisted quite a bit of how to not write a terrible commencement speech and the fastest way to become an English major. <laughs> in all seriousness, I knew I really needed to get it together senioritis out the door and write a heck of a speech for you all today. Now I can assume I'm not the only one whose Linden experience began a little over four years ago as a campus tour. I remember mine vividly. My individualized tour allowed me to learn about the campus, campus activities, even meet a faculty member, Dr. Hanrahan, in her office as a perspective. I remember hearing all about the student success throughout all of the programs over the entire university. Once I came here to NVU, it all came full circle. I got to experience the same student success and watch my peers succeed as well. Not only that, I've had the opportunity to be that tour guide and show off everything that mine did to me some time ago. Seeing as though everybody could not be up here and speak to you today, I figured this would be a great opportunity to highlight the class that I am privileged to have been a part of. Zach Falkenberg, you're a graduate, well, soon to be, I don't want to jinx anything quite yet, of our exercise science program. If you haven't heard already, not only is Zach one of Linden's best athletes in history, and if you were at the banquet, you know what I'm talking about, but he is also heading off to Hudson, Massachusetts to participate in one of the most competitive internships in the field at Cressy Sports Performance. Lizzie Amancio, we'll be leaving the Northeast to head to Montana. Now, I know what you're thinking, what could be in Montana? And President Mills, I know you're from Montana, but I mean something really worthwhile. <laughs> As a student in our outdoor education, leadership, and tourism program, she has had the chance to participate in an internship for credit. After working as an activities guide for the Moonlight Basin Resort in Big Sky, she knew she couldn't go away for long. This summer, she'll be heading back after saying how much she loved the people and the area. Haley Mo <laughs> Woo! Haley Morgan is truly one of the hardest working students I've ever met. Yeah. She has worked her butt off in the New 7 newsroom on campus for the last couple years, and you can ask any other student in the audience to vouch for me. Since her sophomore year, Haley's been working to produce, both literally and figuratively, live shows that are broadcasted to the local community and neighboring 13 towns. That's right, Tim and Megan, if you harp on those 13, like I'll get it eventually. In addition, she's been pushing out local news on air and on the web in preparation for her professional career. And she is ready to take her talents across the state to Burlington as a multimedia journalist for WCAX TV. <laughs> now you all had the privilege to hear Autumn sing earlier and she'll be graduating from our music business and industry program. 
After coming up the hill, Autumn has been using the resources provided here on campus to further herself as a musician. Her EP, My Turn, was just released over a week ago. I highly recommend going and checking it out. But she'll be planning on moving to Los Angeles to continue to grow as a professional. <laughs> the best thing about this campus is what it allows its students to do. While this was only the short story of four graduates, everyone has one to share. Many people overlook the small campus in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, yet many are grateful to get the professionals that the university produces. Every single student receiving their degree today is more than just a professional. They are the go-getters, the dream achievers, the back to back to back to back to back to back, hold on, to back to back to back <laughs> employees of the month, the one of a kind workers. Everyone here today is the future of whatever field they choose to end up in. Now I've told a few people this already, but this opportunity was truly eye-opening. It made me realize just how important a day like today is for so many people. It was more than not having to ever take a dynamics exam again or ever give another weather briefing, and I'm sure my fellow atmospheric science graduates can attest to that. I disagree. <laughs> for some, it was the opportunity to be the first member of their family to walk across a stage like this today and get a degree. For others, the defining part of their lives where they got to prove others wrong. For some, validating the four or more years it took balancing multiple jobs, a full credit load, and raising kids. But for everyone, it's the beginning of the end. I, nope, hold on. The beginning of the rest of our lives. <laughs> now here we are, the end of the speech. I'm supposed to write something inspirational to motivate my fellow classmates. My faculty are supposed to be proud of the student they've mentored. Yet the biggest thank you goes to Grammarly, the free version, of course. <laughs> who made this speech relatively free level, free of errors. <laughs> to my fellow classmates, remember this day. Remember the day that made those late nights of essay writing and studying worth it. Remember the day you officially overbecame, uh, overcame be being a college student during a pandemic. Remember the day where your perseverance and dedication during a potential school closure led to the future of the Vermont State College system. You did it. It doesn't matter how long it took, it doesn't matter how high your GPA was, and it doesn't matter that you may or may not have taken a pass in your English Gen Ed course because for some reason you thought as a science major an English Gen Ed course was a good idea. <laughs> That's not me though. Walk out of here today feeling proud. To the faculty and staff, thank you so much for creating this environment we call home. As somebody who is a homebody through and through, campus provided literally a home away from home. I went from counting the days until I went home to counting the days until I came back to campus. Without your support and guidance, I knew I wouldn't be here today. To the parents, guardians, family members, and friends, and dogs, your support won't go unnoticed. Whether it's financial assistance, motivational assistance, or emotional assistance, no one sees us at our worst more than you do. Graduates, hug them a little tighter today because we know how much they mean to you. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you all today. To see everyone that I have become so close with over these last four years on a day like today is moving. I'm sure others can relate when I say I remember hugging my mother, who was crying, of course, as she is now, after they moved me in for the first time. Little did I know, the first time was also the last time. But savor this moment, because it really is something special. And to my brothers, rah, 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 rah. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby, for your wise words. Congratulations to you for your achievements. We are very proud of you. You know how hard it is for me to say yeah. that? <laughs> I didn't write those words. I think I did. <laughs> but the person who wrote them is spot on. We are proud. I now have the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker, Senator Keisha Rahm Hinsdale. Senator Rahm Hinsdale works in the 
Chittenden District in Burlington, Vermont. Her career in Vermont has spanned preschool education, legal advocacy for victims of domestic violence and municipal civic engagement. When she began her first term in the Vermont legislature in 2009, she was the youngest state lawmaker in the country. She has served as a member on the boards of Emerge Vermont, the Main Street Alliance of Vermont, Planned Parenthood of New England, as well as the Regenerative Food Network and the Vermont Natural Resources Council. She is a strong advocate for addressing climate change and has promoted the Green New Deal before it even had that name. We are so pleased and honored to have her here. Welcome to Senator Keisha Ram Hinsdale. Thank you all so much. When I, when I asked Bobby last night, you know, what do you think the students want to hear? Uh, he said, just something inspirational. And uh, actually, Bobby, it was just really inspirational to me to hear you share your stage and your platform with your fellow students. Um, it really says a lot about you and the community you all have built here. So thank you for the gift of joining you here today. Hi. <laughs> When you said there were dogs, I really was hoping there, there were dogs in the audience. <laughs> Thank you all so much for the warm Linden welcome. It's an honor to join graduates in expressing gratitude to the family and friends, the faculty and staff who have helped them arrive here today, ready to take the next step on their journey. More than anything, class of 2022, it is my privilege to address you, to congratulate you, to invite you to look around and soak it in. You are not on Zoom, and you are not just getting through today to finish packing. You are here, IRL, you have arrived, you have gotten through what must have felt like insurmountable uncertainty and upheaval. And maybe you have even begun to figure out what thriving looks like in the chaos of this moment, when it feels like everything is being reorganized and reordered from the governance of this campus to our everyday realities on this planet. So while we celebrate today, we should also pause to recognize that we are in a confusing cycle of rebirth that follows death. The flag is at half staff because one million Americans have died from the coronavirus and left behind so many loved ones to pick up the pieces. As I've thought about what to say, the world has kept changing. I thought about grounding us in what is most constant, the sun, the moon, the periodic table, the speed of light. I thought about speaking to the power of great events of disorder the two events in recorded history that most greatly reduced income inequality were the Black Plague and World War II. The assassination of President Kennedy threw a nation into mourning and solidified a new coalition with the political will to advance the civil rights movement. Many of your ancestors fled unpredictability and great suffering to give you the opportunity to be here able to live through uncertain times in the beauty of this place and with the community you have in one another. We have felt existential threat before and truly the only constant is change. So we strive through the chaos and disorder to create moments like these to celebrate and to reflect. We hold ceremony, we dip in cold rivers to feel alive together. We replace flags that hold meaning far beyond their fabric. And most importantly, we learn, we grow, and we make meaning where none would otherwise exist. I usually try to have three pieces of sage, coherent advice and tie it up in a bow at the end. But you're going to have to bear with me, perhaps because the legislative session ended a mere 60 hours ago, right? Representative Masland, my brain woke me up in the middle of the night asking the most basic questions we have at our disposal. Who, what, where, when, and why? <laughs> 
is, are those the English professors? <laughs> oh, journalism. Okay, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Gold star for the day. The who in this case is you, my dear graduates. And you are one step further on your journey of figuring out who exactly you are. There are a few thoughts about who you are that I would offer. First, you will always be figuring that out. And there is deep joy and deep pain in revealing new parts of yourself. But it is the stuff of life. Second, it will happen at incredibly unexpected times. I remember in 2016, during my first run for statewide office, I followed Senator Patrick Leahy and Attorney General T.J. Donovan at a large political rally at the old labor hall in Barrie. For some reason, our speakers had begun to outdo each other in terms of their Irish Catholic roots, and I was up next. I took a deep breath and my mind went blank, and then I said, well, I'm not Irish Catholic, but I did grow up in my Indian immigrant father's and Jewish American mother's Irish pub in Los Angeles. The crowd lost their minds, and just like that, deep into my political career and my young adult life, adrenaline and hard cider helped me turn what had felt like an unspeakably unexplic complex background into a true American story. Finally, in terms of who you are, it is helpful to know what makes you your best self, and then keep practicing it. There are a lot of graduation speeches that talk about making your bed or wearing sunscreen, it can be any number of things that ensure your body doesn't only not sabotage your success, but it is your partner in achieving that success. I know you're having that negotiation with your bodies right now. For me, it's sleep. I have gotten eight hours of sleep nearly every night since I was in college. It's perhaps the only consistent thing I've had in my life, and it is the thing that has made me most productive in the other hours of the day. So when you think of who you are, don't leave your body behind. Next, the what of your life. This might be the hardest question to answer, especially as you begin this journey into adulthood in a changing world with an evolving reality about the nature of work. Thankfully, the Japanese have us covered on this one with the concept of ikigai. The traditional Japanese philosophy around ikigai focuses on finding your bliss, and a more Western interpretation has used it as a methodology of finding your dream career. Hopefully, it can serve as one in the same in your life. Your ikigai sits at the center of what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, right, families, and what the world needs. And of course, no one can tell you what you love, and there is always room to be good at things and find a new way to be paid for them, right, students? But I can tell you what the world needs. In the words of Howard Thurman, the world needs you to ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. And that leads us to the where. Where do you come alive? It's a question we don't ask ourselves enough. Maybe for you it's on a moonlight hike with your classmates in President Mills, or staring out at Lake Willoughby on a misty day. As a politician in Vermont, I'm not doing my job unless I ask you to please stay here and go about your business of coming alive here in Vermont. <laughs> you see, I was not lucky enough to be born a Vermonter, but I was smart enough to become one. I had heard of this romantic place called Vermont with covered bridges, rolling hills, and clean air. What really sealed the deal, however, was a national public radio story about a certain dog chapel in this brave little state in the town of St. Johnsbury. As I was making my college decisions, I thought, Perhaps the people who worship dogs on mountainsides have it figured out, and I should join them. <laughs> that said, I still didn't have the right clothes or know how to brave the weather. When I told my family I needed something called Gore-Tex to live in New England, my sister was convinced that was a Harry Potter character. <laughs> I wore hoop earrings and platform boots into the woods as a natural resources student at UVM, and no one thought I would stay. And not just stay, but look in the eyes of all of my neighbors after graduation and ask to serve them in the legislature. Let me get this straight, one neighbor asked. You're from Hollywood, and you moved here, and you want to stay here, you don't mind the winters, and you want to be our legislator at 22. You sound nutty enough to be a Vermonter, so you have my vote. <laughs> when I challenged incumbents for a seat in the legislature, we were staring down what looked like a bleak future as well. The Great Recession was looming as the ink was drying on our diplomas in 2008. 
I ran for the legislature without health care, as a renter, and was openly told I didn't care enough about the community without owning a home. And we know that's a very hard reality for us young people. My opponents acted as if I had no right to run. I was called a kitten with lipstick, and they said they'd be curious to know what I thought I brought to the table. So I knocked on every door twice, registered hundreds of new voters, doubled my opponent's vote count, and won by the largest margin of any challenger in the state that year, becoming the youngest legislator in the country. More importantly, I soon came to realize where I was had so much to do with what felt possible. I knew my neighbors, I had a sense of place and community, and that made all the difference. In fact, people who are thinking about elected office often ask me if they should run where they grew up or where they went to school or where it might be easiest. My answer is to run and serve where you want to be buried, where you want the impact of your efforts to be felt long after you're gone. Any type of service, be it elected or not, is hard work and often thankless work. Be where you know deep in your bones it matters because one day, all that will be left is your bones and the impact you had on your place and the people who call it home. Now, when is the easiest part? With the fiercest urgency of now and for as long as it takes. The world needs you right now in no uncertain terms. It also needs your sustained contributions, so find that balance. But do not hesitate to give your gift to the world. It is needed and appreciated. And in the words of the great Dr. King, the time is always right to do what is right. The world may not accept your gifts right away, but that does not mean you give up. Sometimes you won't succeed. You won't double your opponent's vote count and the door you pushed on will swing back and knock you down instead. The arc of the moral universe will wobble when you bend it. I was proud to be the first woman of color to earn double digits in a statewide race in Vermont, but I lost in 2016 and I had left everything on the table. I had no energy or fight left in me. Governor Madeline Kunin, who I'm fortunate to have as a guiding light in my life, was very practical in her advice after that. She shrugged and said, when I lost my race, I went to the Kennedy School and got a master's degree. Fair enough. So I did that and I came back and I became the first woman of color to serve in the state Senate four years later. In fact, I resolved that it was finally time for Vermont to pass an environmental justice bill that I had first introduced in 2007. 15 years later, we were still not addressing disparities in environmental burdens and benefits. Mobile home communities are still flooding. Children are still experiencing lead poisoning. Migrant farm workers still do not have healthy working and living conditions. So I set out to renew that effort and we passed Vermont's first environmental justice legislation with a bipartisan vote in both the House and the Senate this year. I tried to explain to the 13-year-old pages who assist us in the State House that I'd been working on the bill for longer than they were alive and that it was still worth it. Find the work that makes you always feel like the time is right and those years will fly by quickly and joyfully. And so why? Why do any of this in a world on fire? in a world that is unequal and unfair? Why replace a flag that was taken down? Why put a flag up in the first place? I can't answer that question for you, but I can say I believe deeply in our sacred obligation to leave this world just a little bitter, bit better off than when we found it. A little more just, a little more green, to live in a way that honors the three generations before us that fought, risked everything, and sometimes lost their lives for our right to vote, our ability to live peacefully, our ability to earn more than our parents, and the three generations that will come after, who we want to be able to experience the beauty of this world, the dignity of personal autonomy and freedom, and the power of collective governance we know as democracy before it's too late. That leads us to perhaps the most persistent question of our time, how? How do we heal this division in our nation and the world that comes from a sense of scarcity? Scarcity of resources, of power, of access. How do we get out of the echo chambers that are making us build our own walls and wage our own wars in our families and in our communities? The only answer is together. 
Nature tries to give us so many examples of interconnectedness. Whether we like it or not, we share the same planet and the same fate. Many indigenous communities still know this intuitively and from story. The Abenaki people, the keepers of this land we stand on, have the same word for community as they do for watershed. It is Wolhanak, and it essentially means bowl. Trickling streams feed into rushing rivers. Enough water can shape stone, and drops of rain form lakes and oceans. A mentor of mine in the legislature from the Republican Party would say, you may be in the majority, but we are all in the same boat. So if we're all doing our job, then the majority steers the ship, but the minority points out the rocks. That always stuck with me as a way to keep division from taking root in my heart and in my work. When we think about survival in a moment like this, the mighty sequoia of the West might give us the best example of all. They are majestic trees that seemingly touch the sky. They are among the tallest and largest living things on earth, and they have been standing for millennia. But you will never find one alone. When one finally topples over, you see its roots are shallow because they do not dig down. They reach out and intertwine with the roots of the trees beside them. They can only grow together in community. So remember, this is your Wolhanak, your community. Whatever you do lifts up or brings down the others among you. From the smallest drop of water to the largest living thing on land, there is no dividing us if we are going to survive and ultimately thrive. So go fast, go far, reach high, but honor where you came from and who helped you get here. And in doing so, you will honor your families, your friends, your teachers, and above all, yourselves and this brave little state where you had the opportunity to learn, to grow, and to make meaning in a way that I hope will last you a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Rom Hinsdale. I now invite Autumn Chamberlain, class of 2022, back to the podium for the class song. While Autumn comes back to the platform, I would like to note, as Bobby did earlier, that she just released her new album, My Turn, that is on Spotify. Autumn is a singer, songwriter, and music producer. She is also a multi-instrumentalist who plays the piano, guitar, bass, ukulele, and saxophone. She has sung the national anthem countless times at Linden sporting and student events during her four years in the music business and industry program. She has also played the piano and sung at numerous academic events such as convocation, December graduation, and robing. We are very grateful and fortunate to hear from her one more time as she sings for you her special song for the class of 2022. I was 100% positive that I was not gonna be able to get my guitar over the cap. So I'm glad that I predicted the future. Uh, so before I begin, I just want to give a little bit of background. Um, like Nolan said, I'm graduating uh, with a double concentration uh, from the music business and industry major, uh, self-promotion and audio production. And um, over the years um, at Linden, I have kind of honed in on my songwriting process, and I've realized that um, there's like three main things that I need to include. Uh, wordplay, personal experience, and writing it all at once because I procrastinated too hard. Um, this song that uh, I've written is a culmination of all three. Uh, I didn't really know what to write for this. Um, I had the choice, I could have done a cover, but I knew I wanted to write something and I knew I wanted it to be completely original, nothing that anyone had ever heard from me before. Um, but I didn't know what to write. Uh, this is a very exciting time for everyone here. And I am uh, feeling less excited and more uh, paralyzed with fear and anxiety. 
Um, so I, I decided to be honest and I wrote about that. So there's my personal experience. Um, as far as writing it all at once, I finished this Friday. Uh, <laughs> so let's hope I remember it. And uh, as far as wordplay, uh, the song is called NVU. I am so afraid when I should be filled with pride. Unacknowledged progress seems to fade, leaving me alone and terrified. The hills I've yet to conquer look so high. I want to see the vastness through my eyes. And I envy all that you can see past all of the doubt holding deep inside of me and to all of the mountains with a greater point of view because you know the end I envy you well, I am not designed to trust each step I take is gonna hold you adorn the bigger picture in a hopeful frame of mind. It's painted in a map I can't unfold. And I envy all that you can see past all of the doubt I'm holding deep inside of me. And to all of the mountains with a greater point of view. Because you know the end I envy. Cloudy up here, which way is up? How are we to know if we've gone far enough? If you question your direction, just ain't true to who you are. Doing this will keep you highest above. And I envy all that you can see. Past all of the doubt I'm holding deep inside of me and To all of the mountains with a greater point of view Because you know the end, I envy you And I envy all I am to be Nothing standing in my way from summiting my peak and To all of the mountains that will watch me make it because you knew my strength, I envy you. Because you know the end, I envy you. Thank you, Autumn. That was absolutely lovely. I now invite Ethan Coppenrath, class of 2002 and president of the Alumni Council, to the podium to present the Outstanding Graduating Senior Award. Good morning. I am pleased to present the Alumni Council's Outstanding Graduating Senior Award on behalf of the Alumni Council. This award is presented to a senior who exemplifies strong leadership skills, is involved in the surrounding community, and has a 3.0 or greater cumulative grade point average. This outstanding graduate is a model student that has stood out because of both their academic successes and their participation outside the classroom. They have consistently been on the president's or dean's list and have received other academic awards. They're actively involved in various roles on campus and possess excellent leadership skills. They worked as a student office professional 
for the admissions team and also complete, uh, competed in varsity athletics. They served as president of the Linden American Meteorological Society student chapter and was instrumental in organizing and hosting the 2021 and 22 Northeastern Storm Conferences, even amid a pandemic. They are graduating today summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Atmospheric Sciences and an Associate in, of, in, of Science in Electronic Journalism Arts and will be continuing on to graduate school in the fall. It is my pleasure to present this year's Outstanding Graduating Senior Award to Bobby Saba. Congratulations, Bobby. Thank you, Ethan, and congratulations, Bobby. Well deserved. I am Tom Anderson, the Associate Academic Dean, and I offer a special presentation today. As you may have noticed, uh, there's a basket of flowers on the first seat of the first row of our graduate section. These flowers are in honor of a student who tragically lost his life in a house fire in May 2021. Max Thurber was a criminal justice major, and he would have graduated today. I knew Max from the bridge program. He was uh, always smiling, always in good spirits. He loved to envy you, his classes, classmates, and instructors. He was just a kind, gentle soul. Here are some fond remembrances from his peers and faculty. From student peer Alec Wolf, Max Thurber was always willing to learn, listen, and give advice. He was part of WWLR for two years and was my co-host for the midnight to 2 a.m. radio show. His outlook on life, positivity, and infectious energy will be something that I will carry with me forever. Anybody in the room with him loved being around him, and we are all better because of him. Thank you, Max. I will see you on the flip side, brother. From instructor Jessica Visneski, Max was exceptionally personable, kind, and outgoing. He clearly had passion for social justice issues, particularly issues on the intersections of child welfare and justice systems. He was a joy to have in class and could be counted on to have many thoughtful questions during each session that would inspire much conversation. I greatly looked forward to his insight each week. Max was one of those one of a kind, possibly once in a lifetime types of students. His enthusiasm was contagious and his presence has been deeply missed in my classes. From Professor Brandon Stroop, Max was always very engaged in my courses and had tremendous empathy for the plight of others. Max was so friendly and talkative, dedicated to his schoolwork and bettering the world. Even during our remote period, he had a special way of engaging his peers in dialogue. He could always be counted on for conversation after class was over to discuss his interest in restorative justice or related topics. I deeply appreciated his passion towards restorative justice and advocacy for disadvantaged populations. From student peer Isabel Tuggle, I enjoyed getting to know Max during our time together at Northern Vermont University. My first impression of Max was that he was a kind, thoughtful, and considerate person, and I remember having lunch with Max at the hornet's nest. We both had a great time sharing our stories and getting to know each other. I re remember going to the Valentine's Day dance with Max, where we danced, chatted, and enjoyed each other's company. Max was my good friend. We both liked the color purple. I will plant a purple lilac in my garden for him this year. Max, you will be remembered. Could everyone please share a moment of silence with me in honor of Max? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tom, for that kind tribute. And we wish you were here, Max. We now would like to transition to the reading of names, the moment you have all been waiting for. 
I invite Bill Morrison, Associate Professor in Business Administration, to the side podium. Professor Morrison will invite students by department to the platform, and he will invite faculty by department to come forward to the end of the ramp to congratulate students as they exit the platform. Students, please remember to pause at the top of the exit ramp for a photo by Grad Images. Professor Dan Daly and Associate Academic Dean Tom Anderson will assist with diploma jackets. Will the College Steps graduate please rise and come forward. Staff and faculty greeting those graduates after they come across the platform are Ms. Maria Caviello Gould, Professor Dan Daly from the platform. Michael Adam, College Steps. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the College Steps graduate. <laughs> Will the Atmospheric Sciences graduates and faculty please rise and come forward? Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Janelle Hanrahan, Professor Ari Preston, Professor Jason Schaefer. Robert A. Saba, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences. Associate of Science, Electronic Journalism Arts, summa cum laude. John W. Currier, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences, Minor, Mathematics, Calculus-Based Physics, summa cum laude. Maison de Jesus, Bachelor of Science, Climate Change Science, minor in Environmental Science, Business, and Geology. Michael Anthony Fecca, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences, cum laude. Haley Lane Fischetti, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences, Associate of Science, Electronic Journalism Arts, magna cum laude. Aaron Leo Florence, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences. Karellen Reese Frazier, Bachelor of Science, Climate Change Science, minor in Atmospheric Sciences and Geology. Alexander Joseph Fry, Bachelor of Science, Climate Change Science. Kyle Allen Gesford, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Science. Robert William Koenig, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences, Associate of Science, Electronic Journalism Arts, cum laude. Thatcher Larrabee, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences, cum laude. <laughs> Brendan Ruff, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences. <laughs> Mark
Brittany M. Smith, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences, magna cum laude. Vanessa M. Simonic, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences, Associate of Science, Electronic Journalism Arts. Patrick C. Wickstrom, Bachelor of Science, Atmospheric Sciences, Bachelor of Science, Climate Change Science. Ladies and gentlemen, the Atmospheric Sciences graduating class. Will the business administration graduates and faculty please rise and come forward? Department faculty uh, greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Mr. Tim Egan, uh, Professor William Morrison, myself from the platform, and Professor James Noyes. Nicholas Canzano, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Benjamin Isaac Cheever, Bachelor of Science, Sport Management, Minor in Marketing. <laughs> Paige E. Daly, Bachelor of Science, Sport Management, Associate of Science, Mountain Resort Management. Oliver Henry Cole, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Associate of Science, Minor, minor, minor in Marketing. Luke Fredzell, Bachelor of Science, Sport Management, Minor in Marketing. Shane Johnston, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Minor in Marketing, Summa Cum Laude. Jesse Christopher Monroe, Bachelor of Science in Accounting, Bachelor of Science in Business, Summa Cum Laude. Daniel J. Mazzucato, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Minor in Atmospheric Sciences and Marketing. Macy Elizabeth Powers, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Minor in Marketing. Ladies and gentlemen, the Business Administration graduating class. Will the communications and journalism graduates uh, and faculty please rise and come forward? Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Tim Lewis, Ms. Lauren Maloney, Ms. Kerry Nelson, and Professor Megan Meacham. <laughs> Nicholas David Fish, Bachelor of Science, Broadcast and Digital Journalism. Haley Ariana Morgan, Bachelor of Science, Electronic Journalism Arts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Communication and Journalism graduating class. Will the Criminal Justice, History, and Global Studies graduates and faculty please rise and come forward. Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Paul Searles, Professor Brandon Stroop, Dr. Jessica Wisniewski.
Christian David Tomaselli, Bachelor of Arts, Global Studies, minor in Russian and Eurasian Studies and Biology. Lonya Barshev, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice, Bachelor of Arts, Global Studies, minor in Russian and Eurasian Studies and History, cum laude. Anthony L. Maurice, Bachelor of Science, Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts, History, minor in Russian and Eurasian Studies and Psychology, cum laude. Kyle A. Layton, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice, Bachelor of Arts, Global Studies, cum laude. Rebecca A. Person, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice, Bachelor of Arts, Global Studies, minor in History, Political Science, summa cum laude. Ladies and gentlemen, the communication, uh, the criminal justice, history, and global studies graduating class. Will the education, early childhood education, and graduate education graduates and faculty please rise and come forward? Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Heather Duramel, Ms. Nancy James, and Professor Michaela Stone. Aliyah Page Austin, Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Brittany Nicole Brimmer, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, Summa Cum Laude. Sarah Chamberlain, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, Magna Cum Laude. Ivy L. Crow, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, Summa Cum Laude. Mary Marguerite Frazier, Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education, cum laude. Burley R. Griffin, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, summa cum laude. Cassidy Don Olden, Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education, Minor in Psychology, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Paige Lynn Cannell, Associate of Science, Special Education. Sarah L. Rougier, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, cum laude. <laughs> Stacy Ann Sullivan, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education. <laughs> Kelly Lynn Turgeon, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, magna cum laude. Ladies and gentlemen, the Early Childhood Education, Education, and Graduate Education graduating class. Will the English, Philosophy, and Film Studies graduates and faculty please rise and come forward. Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor David Johnson, Professor Andrea Luna. Hannah P. Young, Bachelor of Arts, English, summa cum laude. <laughs> T. 
Tori Findlay, Bachelor of Arts, English, Associate of Science, Computing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the English, Philosophy, and Film Studies graduating class. <laughs> Will the Environmental and Natural Sciences graduates and faculty please rise and come forward? Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Ian Balcom, Professor Allison Lathrop, Professor Benjamin Luce. <laughs> Michael C. Baer, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science, cum laude. William Arthur Miller Brown, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science, minor in writing, biology, geology, summa cum laude. Ladies and gentlemen, the Environmental and Natural Sciences graduating class. Will the exercise science graduates and faculty please rise and come forward. Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Katie Boulay, Professor Gregory Ledoux, <laughs> Leah Crompton, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Summa Cum Laude. Gracie A. Ducker, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Magna Cum Laude. Zach Falkenberg, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Cum Laude. Marin Rebecca Fowler, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Raquel A. Medea, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Cum Laude. Ariana Elizabeth Moran, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Magna Cum Laude. Faith Poirier, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Cum Laude. Luke Joseph Perret, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Cooper Daniel Whitehouse, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Exercise Science graduating class. Will the General Studies, Liberal Studies, and Master of Arts in Liberal Studies, and Master of Arts in Leadership Studies graduates and faculty please rise and come forward. The faculty greeting these graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Megan Meacham, Professor Tim Lewis. <laughs> Alyssa Lynn Kelly, Master of Arts, Leadership Studies. Ladies and gentlemen, the General Studies, Liberal Studies, Master of Arts in Liberal Studies, and Master of Arts in Leadership Studies graduating class. <laughs> Will the Mathematics and Computer Science graduates and faculty please rise and come forward? Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Bradley Beth, Professor Dan Daly from the platform.
Devin Biancarello Milano, Bachelor of Science, Computer Information Systems, magna cum laude. Benjamin Thomas Fondakowski, Bachelor of Science, Computer Information Systems. Brian J. Mundell, Bachelor of Science, Computer Information Systems. Timothy S. Willis, Bachelor of Science, Computer Information Systems, cum laude. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Mathematics and Computer Science graduating class. <laughs> Will the Music and Performing Arts graduates and faculty please rise and come forward. Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Joe Gittleman and Professor Brian Warwick. <laughs> Jacob J. Before, Bachelor of Science, Music Business Industry, minor in Cinema Productions. <laughs> Curtis J. Bates, Bachelor of Science, Music Business and Industry. Autumn Brooke Chamberlain, Bachelor of Science, Music Business Industry, Minor in Marketing, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Liam J. Demers, Bachelor of Science, Music Business and Industry. Caitlin Gillette, Bachelor of Science, Music Business and Industry, Minor in Business, cum laude. Camden LeClaire, Bachelor of Science, Music Business Industry, Associate of Science, Music and Self-Promotion. Nathaniel D. Perrin, Bachelor of Science, Music Business Industry. <laughs> Caleb Marsh, Bachelor of Science, Music Business Industry. <laughs> Hunter Gregory Myers, Bachelor of Science, Music Business Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, the Music and Performing Arts graduating class. Will the Outdoor Education, Leadership, and Tourism graduates and faculty please rise and come forward. Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor, Professor Sean Dahl, Professor Benjamin Merkin, and Professor James Noyes. Elizabeth S. Amancio, Bachelor of Science, Mountain Recreation Management, Associate of Science, Business, Minor in Marketing, Magna Cum Laude. Andrew Conway, Bachelor of Science, Outdoor Education, Leadership and Tourism, Cum Laude. Annabelle B. Hip. The Bachelor of Science, Mountain Recreation Management, Associate of Science, Visual Communications, Minor in Business, cum laude. Owen Riley Kelly, Bachelor of Science, Mountain Recreation Management, Minor in Marketing. Audrey Elizabeth Levine, Bachelor of Science, Mount Recreation Management, Magna Cum Laude.
Anthony J. Townsend, Bachelor of Science, Outdoor Education, Leadership and Tourism, Minor in Marketing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Outdoor Education, Leadership and Tourism graduating class. <laughs> Will the Psychology and Human Services graduates and faculty please rise and come forward. Department faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Patricia Schein, Professor Lori Runderschlag from the platform. <laughs> Brianna Jane Haywood, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services, summa cum laude. Jillian J. McDonald, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services, Associate of Science, Special Education. Alice Catherine Morrison, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services. Felicity F. Norco, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> David Curtis Party, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services, Bachelor of Arts, Global Studies. Jamie L. Powers, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services. <laughs> Nat Sullivan, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services, Minor in Criminal Justice, Magna Cum Laude. Sabrina K. Thompson, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services, summa cum laude. <laughs> Cormac A. Waters, Bachelor of Science, Applied Psychology and Human Services, minor in music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Psychology and Human Services graduating class. Will the visual arts graduates and faculty please rise and come forward. Visual arts faculty greeting their graduates after they come across the platform are Professor Kelly Glentz Brush and Professor Kate Renner. Brandon M. Barone, Bachelor of Arts, Graphic Design. <laughs> M. Rory Conroy, Bachelor of Arts, Graphic Design, Cum Laude. Caitlin Autumn Gross, Bachelor of Arts, Graphic Design, Associate of Science, Photography. Samir Kadrich, Bachelor of Arts, Graphic Design, Associate of Science, Photography. <laughs> Alexander Terrio, Bachelor of Arts, Graphic Design. Latina Marie Eliza Weber, Bachelor of Arts, Graphic Design, Minor Photography. <laughs> Emily Charlotte Clancy, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Graphic Design, Associate of Arts, Visual Arts, cum laude.
Amanda May Adams, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Animation and Illustration, minor in Graphic Design, magna cum laude. Dakota Lubert, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Animation and Illustration, minor in Visual Arts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Visual Arts graduating class. Thank you, Professor Morrison, for completing the very noble task of reading our graduates' names one final time. Your dulcet tones will be missed. Dulcet tones? <laughs> Bobby wrote his own thing, so maybe Morrison wrote his, too. <laughs> Autumn, what is, are those dulcet tones? Where's Autumn? Are, those, are they dulcet tones? You don't know. All right. OK. I now invite Provost Atkins, well, he's already there, to the side podium for the conferring of degrees. President Mills, before we confer the degrees, I would like to take a moment to recognize our graduates who are receiving two degrees today. Would you please stand and be recognized for your demonstrated focus and hard work? Two degrees. My congratulations to these students for their extra measure of success. President Mills, it is now my privilege to report to you that the candidates assembled here who are qualified to be awarded degrees have met NVU Linden standards and have received the recommendation of their respective major departments. The faculty assembly recommends such candidates be awarded the appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic achievement. Would the faculty please rise and turn to face the graduates? Would the faculty please formally confirm the College Steps candidates as well as our candidates for associates, bachelor's, and master's degrees? Please indicate your approval with an enthusiastic aye. President Mills, these candidates have been confirmed, and thank you to our faculty. Will the graduating class of 2022 please rise again? <laughs> by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Vermont State College System, I do hereby confer upon qualified candidates your corresponding certificates of completion as well as your associate's, bachelor's, and master's degrees and welcome you to the Academy of Scholars. We will now proceed with the ceremonial moving of the tassel. And you got to do it, because I won't sign the diploma unless you do it. <laughs> All right? At this time, move your tassel from the right to the left side of your mortarboard. <laughs> Thank you. 
It is my pleasure to now introduce NVU Linden's graduating class of 2022. Come on on that one. <laughs> Please be seated. I invite Alumni Council President Ethan Coppenrath back to the podium for this next induction. Thank you. With the Alumni Council here to bear witness and the authority vested in me by the Constitution and bylaws of the Alumni Association, it is now my honor and privilege to formally induct NVU Linden's 110th graduating class into the Linden Alumni Association with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities attendant thereto. Congratulations. Thank you, Ethan, and welcome to our newest alumni. Graduation guests, I now pronounce this the conclusion of our commencement ceremony. Let's give our graduates one big round of applause. I now invite all families, friends, and guests, alumni, faculty, and staff to the standard gym where you will meet the, the graduates. Please wait until the recessional of the graduates, faculty, and the platform party has been completed before leaving your seats. I now invite Ian McCarg and John Nowick, bagpipe and drum, from the Vermont Institute of Celtic Arts to lead the recessional. Please give them plenty of room as they march out of the tent Please don't crowd them while you take your photographs. And thank you and congratulations again, class of 2022, on your remarkable journey with a successful destination. Yeah. 